All right, this is John Krasinski, uh, Pittsburgh Soccer Now. Uh, we are on Pittsburgh Sports Live. This is Pittsburgh Post Game. Uh, I would say the Pittsburgh Riverhounds just won their biggest match of the year, beating Tampa Bay Rowdies uh, two to one down in St. Petersburg. And with me is Jordan Smith. Jordan, you uh, you were on the uh, kind of watching this match from the get go uh, on the live file for Pittsburgh Soccer Now, uh, providing the coverage and the updates and whatnot. I mean, was this the best performance of the year for the Hounds or was it just their most efficient in terms of doing what they had to do to win? I, I definitely think uh, both. It was efficient and this probably was their best game of the season. Um, yeah, we're, we're not going to doubt Bob Lilly ever again. Uh, no <laughs> one ever will. Um, there's coaches like this in every league, you know, People doubt Mike Tomlin, but never has a losing season. People doubt Barry Trotz of the Islanders, and they're in the conference final. So um, Bob Billy clearly uh, has his pulse on this team. And um, I'm curious what they worked on in practice because they came out in a 4-2-3-1, kind of like the Man United days under uh, Mourinho, uh, kind of playing in that formation. But the first half, they were brilliant, and it was really a trap and counterattack night for the Hounds. They really frustrated Tampa Bay, and the only time their team and their fans got into it was in that stoppage time in the, the late second half. But a brilliant that first half definitely was their, their best 45 minutes of the season. Yeah, it, it was well orchestrated. They, they you know, And I go back to the beginning of the week. I think Bob Lilly has – a vision of what he wants when he notes, like he looks at um, multiple games. He'll look, I mean, I, I've talked to him so much in the past four years now, just to get a feel for kind of his approach. And he'll look at multiple game swings, knowing that he had the Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday. And he, I think he took the approach of these, this is going to be, I think the lineups were very well calculated, you know, probably seven days out. He kind of knew what he was going to get put out there last Saturday. Knew he, he knew what he was going to put out there Tuesday night. And then after Tuesday night, uh, as you could see on the live blog, I put in a projected lineup. I think I was only off by one, but it's predictable when you see the rotation and kind of where they were going. So, um, and it was the lineup that I, I pretty much expected uh, being that, you know, being that the midfield was a key spot that they, 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 both Todd Wharton and Canardo Forbes did not start in a previous match and I knew they would get starts tonight. And that was, you know, those are two guys that are going to be key connectors and they were very accurate um, in terms of, you know, get connecting those passes from the, you know, playing it out of the back when they were getting it in those transitional moments, which, which is where they, they were the most dangerous tonight. Uh, they didn't, they really didn't get into the, possession back I mean it was pretty even maybe the first 30 minutes uh, I'd still say Tampa still had more possession but then after that they they were conceding the numbers of possession but it didn't matter because I think when Forbes and Wharton especially and Danny Griffin too uh, were were connecting with the forwards I, I really feel that they were that was that was it I mean they were they were very efficient in getting the ball forward. And when they did, the first time it got to Cicerone, made a nice little crossover to, to Danny Griffin. You know, the second time this year he scored a goal where the ball, you know, where they're from the left side and then Griffin makes that nice run uh, in to find the opening, find that spot. It just seems like he's, he just, he's very good at that. And that's something Bob Lilly really likes. Yeah, uh, when, when you're a player like Griffin, he's reminding me of Mertz right now. Um, yeah. Just a guy who runs from 18 to 18 the whole game, and you're occasionally going to get rewarded um, when you're willing to have the fitness to run from one box to the other. And yeah, Cicerone, I swear, in the first half, he was open all game at that left wing. And uh, when that first goal happened, I thought he was going to take a shot there. Um, but he was unselfish, and it's a brilliant play uh, to Griffin. But this is an impressive um, road trip for the Hounds. They win their first game in Indiana against the Indy 11, and they were 0-3-3 all-time going in to facing Tampa Bay. 
and they get their first one against them and it happens to be at their place. So yeah, yeah this is uh, like you said, greatly orchestrated by Lily. This was a terrific road trip. Well, and also a coach who, you know, after losing a match three to nothing, I don't think he's going to let that happen again no. at Tampa. And yeah, they've struggled at Al Lang stadium for sure. Uh, since the Rowdies have come into the USL, I think it was back in 2008, 17. So yeah, there's okay. definitely, definitely been some struggles at, down there in St. Petersburg, but this again, winning, winning at Indy 11 and then Tampa, Tampa, I don't think a lot of people going into this week would have thought, you know, one point at home and then six on the road, but either way they got the job done. They got seven points out of a possible nine. Um, so the back line, you know, again, there's a lot of Tampa Bay possession. I, I how effective were they in the final third? I, I thought they really struggled to find channels. And I thought the Hounds back line, I thought they did an outstanding job, Jordan. Yeah, I think that back line, it's it's finally getting into form. We we've talked about that since the beginning of the season, how we said that was kind of a worry. But tonight, you know, after that performance, I, I wasn't too worried. Um, and Vidiello, he looked sharp. I mean, he wasn't tested too much, but when he was, he was, uh, he was agile, he was moving. Um, but yeah, it was a great uh, result from the back line. They helped. I mean, that game reminds me of that Austin Bowl game that the Riverhounds played a few weeks ago where um, the Riverhounds dominated in possession, but just couldn't get those chances. And that was kind of how it was tonight for Tampa Bay. Um, I don't know if their coach after the game is going to say they weren't urgent, like how Bob Lilly stated the other week, mm -hmm. but um, they possessed, they had over 70% possession, I believe, but the chances weren't really there. The, the hounds just, they trapped, they, uh, they stayed patient and they took their opportunities. Yeah, it was, a, the shots were pretty even. Uh, it was 11, 11 to 10, Tampa Bay had one more shot, but uh, mm. Tampa had four on target and I, the Riverhounds had five. So again, both teams had their moments. It, it's about, it, Bob Lilly talks about this all the time. It's about capitalizing on those moments. And again, this is a team that's just starting to come together now. You know, Tampa Bay, mm -hmm. a lot of momentum. They spent a lot of, they had extra preseason time together. So at the beginning of the season, they were in pretty good form. And of course the Hounds were, we're still trying to find themselves. That was clear as day. We knew that if they were going to go down to Tampa in the first week and come out with a result, it would, it would have been a grinded out type of an affair. But, but tonight it was, again, I felt like they, they knew exactly, you know, they know each other a lot better now. I think, again, you see that the midfield working well together, the back lines finally coming together. And I think you got those forwards, you know, there's a lot of, you know, when, when we go back and look at the, look at the stats and the individual uh, play tonight. And uh, when I work on my player grades and, you know, I'm going to see, I, I saw a lot of good little things from Alex Dixon. Again, I mean, the guy is just, oh, yeah. he's, he's just efficient. He makes the right decisions. Uh, you know, he, he just, uh, he wins balls. He has, finds a way. I think there was a, you know, there's a couple of interesting um, things that happened. There was a free, a free kick for Tampa. Uh, and, and the Hounds oh, yeah. responded well. There was a, I guess, it was a free kick. It was real close to the box. It was in the second half. And the Hounds reacted to the, um, to the second touch for the, to the first. Well, actually, right after, it looked like Tampa Bay just played it off to the, to the next player on the side. And Dixon, I don't know how many players would have thought of this, but just came out and did, just came out with a slide tackle. Uh, it disrupted the, the entire play. It was it was just a savvy veteran play. And I don't know how many guys do that, but he 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 disrupts it. That whatever they were trying to do didn't even get get attempted. He poked it away and then he won the ball and he got fouled. And like that's just a vet a, a savvy veteran play. And I think that's the kind of thing that you can, you know, I this team has. Canardo Forbes, you know, we finally, he finally gets an assist tonight. He finally gets, you know, in the yeah. score sheet. We haven't seen him produce numbers, you know, in terms of offensive stats, but he is, his presence is still with, you know, I think he has such an impact on this, this club and as a calming presence. And 
uh, again, with him and Wharton in the middle um, directing traffic, I, I, I have a lot of faith in this in this club going forward. Yeah, I mean, any club would love to have Kenny there in the middle of the park for them, without a doubt. Um, but we're happy we have him. Um, but yeah, Tampa Bay clearly tried to be cute on that free kick, um, trying a little trick play there. And you're right, Dixon just read it perfectly. And then he gets fouled uh, after he made a little nifty move around the player and uh, he gets dragged down. I believe it was uh, um, Hilton. Yeah, Hilton got mm -hmm. the yellow card. But speaking of him and, and Wyke and Autobio Smith, if there was a weakness I could point out for Tampa Bay, I felt like that trio in the midfield, they weren't tracking back as much, not as much as like Danny, uh, Danny Griffin and Wharton were. And so I felt like the Riverhounds took advantage of that. And maybe Tampa Bay just thought, oh, yeah, it'll be another 3 nothing win. Uh, let's pad our stats here. But the Hounds counterattacked. And they, I think because those guys weren't tracking back as much, it gave the River Hounds more space. And that's why I kept seeing Ciceroni open on the left side and, and Dixon too. Um, but yeah, I think the fitness level was great for the River Hounds tonight. And they used those subs all five efficiently. So um, great result. Yeah. And I think when you, when you think about it, the fact that they played, you know, at this point in the season, they were kind of in that mid season level of fitness now. And I don't yeah. think, three games in seven days is going to be when you have quality uh, players that you could rotate in and out, you can go 17, 18, 19 deep in the course of using all those players, maybe even 20 players over the course of seven days and three games in seven days. I think that I don't look at it as, a, as a concern. And I think this is one of the areas that the Riverhounds really wanted to improve upon in the off season. And I think they've done that. I mean, we're so far from what mm -hmm. we've seen, even when they were struggling, you could still see signs when they started a, a, for example, a game at Loudon, they, when they started Jalen Robinson, it was his first start. And we saw moments from Jalen that, you know, like this guy, this is, should could be starting every match. And so mm -hmm. to have that quality player, in the rotation, not necessarily starting every match early in the season, but then seeing he gets to start tonight, like, you know, Lily recognizes that quality. I think there's, there's a reason why he was out there tonight. Reason why Wharton was out there tonight. I think these are guys that maybe haven't gotten every start, but knowing that you're playing Tampa Bay on the road again, I mean, Lily had, you know, he had those options and had experienced players like that to go to. I mean, I, I think as, as far as the, the level of the rotation, um, you know, I think there have been there were years past when Muhammad Dabo or guys like Robbie Mertz were, were getting thrown out there and playing a lot of minutes. Tommy Vanke Azil even. Yeah. Uh, so we're not seeing that this year. I think we're seeing a little bit more playing guys in, you know, rotating guys in and out. I think that's, that could pay off down the road in a, in a long season. Another guy, Josh Gatt, we haven't seen a whole lot of, this is a player with MLS experience. Uh, and I think just the right. fact that he's coming off the bench in a lot of these games, but he got a spot start um, at Indy and he was, he was very effective on that white, right wing, right outside back air spot. Um, and he's versatile and he can play any position. So I think that, that, Lily has, uh, and Dan Visser, assistant coach, I think they're doing a really good job of working guys in and out of the lineup and potentially having guys um, fresh for the, for the long haul. Yeah, you're right. It, it's more of a rotation this year for sure. Um, and yeah, I think they're doing a great job there uh, coaching this team. Um, it'll be interesting to see towards the end of the season who really is those starters, especially at the wing back positions. Um, you know, will it be Rivera? Will Velarde finally be cracking the lineup as a full-time starter? Will Gat be getting more time? Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see, but it is great that Lily has those additions and he did a good job in the off season, um, bringing in those guys and signing them. Um, but yeah, the Riverhound show after today, they beat the first place team in the division. They can clearly beat anyone in this division. So I don't think, uh, we're worried about that, that, you know, I don't think it's uh, ridiculous to say that this team could finish first. They could finish second, third, or fourth in the division, too. I don't know if they will finish first. You're going to have to get tons of results. Um, but, yeah, it, it's it's been uh, – I think they're finally finding their form. 
and it's only nine games. There's still over 20 to go. So a lot of good soccer ahead. Well, good point that they are capable of finishing first. So I think tonight they proved it. I think tonight yeah. they proved it. Now I think they've got to get into a rhythm at home. I think they're finding their way um, and, and playing uh, that high pressing style that they like to play when they're at home on a little bit shorter field and finding mm -hmm. that rhythm and getting, you know, getting ahead of teams when they're at home. I think both home matches, at least the, the losses were, uh, you know, they gave up early goals and they never really could get back into it. And uh, that's mm -hmm. something that they're going to have to figure out anyway. There's going to be a point in time where they're going to trail at some point this season. So they're going to have to figure that part out still. But but a lot of confidence, a lot of momentum. And yeah, they. I think there's a lot of belief now. And I think there's the, maybe even the most important thing is that there's a lot of chemistry uh, that, you know, there's a lot to build on and chemistry. This team is starting to gel and you, you could see that uh, it was very evident tonight uh, in their two to one win at Tampa. Um, yeah. Any final thoughts in terms of, you know, moving forward, they have a little bit of a regular week, somewhat regular week. They'll play on Friday night against New York Red Bulls. And then I believe it's the July 4th special, uh, mm -hmm. the July 3rd special after that. So, um just your thoughts kind of parting thoughts as they move ahead well the the july 3rd special with the, the fireworks i i'm not a big fireworks guy but i'm all right with them but getting out of the parking lot that yeah. that is going to be a tough night it's going to take a while to get out of there but yeah uh, well i yeah. had it all i've always had it timed perfectly if you leave if you have your post game interviews done and you get out of there before the fireworks start <laughs> or even as the fireworks are starting you've got yeah. you've got you got that you've got that momentum you can get out of there before uh, but this year i believe they've moved the fireworks to july 4th so actually i think the the issue is moot but we'll have to double check on that but i'm pretty sure the fireworks <laughs> are actually going to be on the fourth this year and the game is on the third so that's that's an interesting first time ever they won't be playing actually on the fourth so uh, but yeah, I mean, they're New York Red Bulls and uh, I think will be, it, it, you never know. They This is a team that lost 7 nothing to Hartford one week, then the next week they can turn around and beat Charlotte or they can beat Loudon or, you know, they're, they're capable of beating anybody. They have the young talent. I'm sure Bob Lilly will be stressing that all week long. Yeah, this isn't a game to be taken lightly. Uh, yeah, I think the team moving forward, there's finally some hope. There's some momentum here. Um, the club is really starting to gel, like you said. And, yeah, it, I think it's time to go in and get that first uh, – or, wait, this would be the second one at home, right? No, they, they haven't won yet. They no, that, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they tied high, last yeah. game. Yeah, so I think it's time to go in there, get that first one at home, and get the fans what they want. I mean, yeah, it's it's time to see a nice 2 nothing, 3 nothing win at home. Um, pound some goals and come out with urgency. So, yeah, that's what I'm I'm hoping for next Friday at uh, Highmark Stadium. Yep. So, so the four wins this year, the Hounds are now four, three, and three and one, I believe. Uh, all of I'm sorry, four, three, and two, and they yeah, four, are three, two. all their wins are on the road, and it's been four straight wins as well. So, so they can do it on the road. Let's see if they can do it at home. Um, again, an impressive performance tonight. They got the job done. They beat the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Two to one, they held on. Uh, and uh, Jordan, uh, you know, I think this team is really is. I think they're on. I think they're in good position. There's going to be a lot of ups and downs through the season, but I think there's there's a level of confidence knowing that they can do it um, after an, a, a, a win like this tonight. Yeah, yeah, I think the time the uh, the team finally has a, a lot of confidence here now. But yeah, I'm looking forward to the rest of the games and. Uh, we'll be having the coverage the next one uh, against the uh, New York Red Bulls. Yep, Friday night. So we'll be there. Uh, Pittsburgh Soccer Now will be there, of course, and um, and we'll well hopefully one of us or both of us will be there. Uh, maybe even Mac Ica as well. Yep. So uh, until then, uh, thanks for joining us. And Jordan, thank you for joining us uh, tonight and for your uh, for your work tonight with Pittsburgh Soccer Now. And uh, have a good night. Yep. Take care, everybody. Thank you. All right.